Welcome to a brief discussion on the Fredholm alternative. We will now touch on a useful theorem in the theory of differential equations. The theorem holds in a more general setting than we are going to state it, but for our purposes the following statement is sufficient. There is a slightly more general version given in chapter 5 of the text. The Fredholm alternative states exactly one of the following statements holds true. Either x double prime plus lambda x equals 0 with x of a equals 0 and x of b equals 0 has a non-zero solution or x double prime plus lambda x equals f of t with x of a equals 0 and x of b equals 0 has a unique solution for every function f continuous on the closed interval from a to b. The theorem is also true for the other types of boundary conditions we considered in our previous lessons. The theorem means that if lambda is not an eigenvalue, then the homogeneous equation 4.5 has a unique solution for every right-hand side. On the other hand, if lambda is an eigenvalue, then the non-homogeneous equation 4.5 need not have a solution for every f, and furthermore, even if it happens to have a solution, the solution is not unique. So again, one more time, the theorem means that if lambda is not an eigenvalue, then the non-homogeneous equation 4.5 has a unique solution for every right-hand side. On the other hand, if lambda is an eigenvalue, then the non-homogeneous equation 4.5 need not have a solution for every f, and furthermore, even if it happens to have a solution, the solution is not unique. It's also important to reinforce the idea here that linear differential operators have much in common with matrices. So it is no surprise there's a finite dimensional version of Fred Holm alternative for matrices as well. Let A be an n by n matrix. The Fredholm alternative states that either the difference of A in lambda i times vector x equals a zero vector has a non-trivial solution, or the difference of A in lambda i times vector x equals vector b has a unique solution for every vector b. A lot of intuition from linear algebra can be applied to linear differential operators, but one must be careful as well. For example, one difference we have already seen is that in general, a differential operator will have infinitely many eigenvalues, while a matrix has only finitely many. I hope you found this helpful.